If I mute myself, is that going to make the spotlight do weird stuff? It won't. The reason why I ran into problems when we did uh, Sebastian things because I, I had two windows spotlighted and it was going to the one that had the audio. Ah. Uh, so. Okay. But I think with just one spotlight, it should just focus on you. Okay. So basically what we're doing, is, is it recording now? Yeah. yeah. It is. Welcome, so, everybody, to an impromptu Rise Up and Carve demo by yeah. Mr. Michael Bray. Ta -da! So this is a Mora 164, the modern one with the blunt tip. And uh, somebody wanted me to uh, alter it uh, like we used to do with the old 164s, where we took away that uh, sort of blunt, uh, whoops, that blunt cutting edge and made it as close to a Scandi grind as we could. And so that's what's happening here. I have uh, used a Sharpie to uh, mark out the two facets that are going to become one. Can I ask a question? What? No. For anyone who doesn't know, which I don't, what's a Scandi grind? So Scandi grind is, uh, were you there when I had that uh, uh, paper out a little while ago? I'll show you. You weren't, you weren't paying attention, Andrea. So uh, Scandi grind is, um, the, or also known as the Scandinavian grind, is the grind you'll find on the Mora 106 and the 120, where it is a very long, uh, flat surface down to the point, and not like a kitchen knife, which would then have a blunter uh, uh, thing right there. That that entire thing is the 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 bevel on the blade. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes. Okay, good. And um, I can hear you guys, uh, even though I'm going to mute myself because this is so going to be so loud. Um, so if you have questions, you can try to get my attention. Here we go. And there, ladies and gentlemen, goes Mike from California. He's going to show us exactly how he, he himself, only he is doing a scanty grind on a book knife from Mora. Very important to have support, of course. And there he goes. Oh, look at him go. Wow, amazing. Looks so simple. This is something I wanted to do and have been cautious about doing it. Really oh. wanted. See how Michael does it. This, I'm really excited to try this and seeing him do it might. So Michael, are you going back and forth or just from the top to the front, kind of just lifting it and going back down? Um, good question. Because this is a rotary tool, um, I'm going in this direction to cut, which is against the rotation of the, the cutting tool. And on the way back, I'm lifting up and coming back down. So it looks like I'm going back and forth, but I'm going forward and up and around, forward and up and around. Okay. Uh, if you ever use one of these tools, you'll find out quickly that you don't want to go in the same direction as the rotation of the motor. And that's essentially true for, for all woodworking tools that rotate. Okay. Yes. Awesome. So I'll go back. Don't forget your earmuffs, Mike. That would be so interesting to check the how it actually feels after. I can imagine the other two changes. Yeah, sometimes I wish I could like try out all axes and all knives and yeah. Why have you wanted to do this, Kevin? I have a um a couple of 
164s that I bought secondhand from people. And I want to make kind of starter kits for friends who I think might like to try spoon carving. And I'm willing to kind of urge them to get them over the hump. Um, and since I have a couple of them, I know Mike Bray uh, talks about the benefits of doing this. And I was also at a festival with Tim Manny, who said, this is the way to make these knives much, much better. So it's something I want to try. And I also just, I have a few knives that I want to reprofile. And I thought and this might give me the confidence to even do a straight knife this way. So uh, that's all. Oh, you know what? Normally, I, I forgot that I, I was going to say that's it for the, for the Dremel, but it's not. We're, we're going to change grits. And I'll do that all again. And then after that, it's all just, uh, you know, uh, wet, dry sandpaper and, you know. You know what the two grits are, Mike? Uh, rough and medium. <laughs> yeah, Dremel, right, they, they Dremel both, has a couple. So this one, the finer one says 240 on it. The coarser one doesn't say anything. So I'm assuming it's like 100 or 120. Gotcha. Uh, but it, it doesn't say. If you could get these wheels up through the finer grits, would you continue using them or would you switch to sandpaper anyway? Well, um, I would probably go to sandpaper because once you get to the finer grits, it just, uh, it just ends up heating it up rather than oh. anything else. I worry about this uh, overheating. Like so it, was, it was pretty hot a minute ago. So you're just dealing with the heat in these initial stages by having a light touch? Um, I light touch going quickly. You can see where I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not like uh, staying in one area and grinding away. I'm going, moving a lot. Yeah. And it also keeps you from uh, accidentally overdoing in one area. Cool. So my intention is to make this a flat surface, but instead it's usually a gently rounded surface. And I wish it wasn't, but... That's, that's what I have. So Hewn and Hone actually says that the beveled surface is preferable for hooks because it reduces chatter. So yeah. they, they prefer it that way at Hewn and Hone. They prefer it the way that uh, it's shipped from the Mora Knife Company? No, no, what you're doing, you said in, uh, with the gentle bevel instead of a true flat Scandi, they say that's better for hook knives. It's just, I, I don't have it in me to do anything better. It, so I'm glad that it's good because that's all I'm gonna do. Right. <laughs> so basically uh, this was two distinct uh, bevels a few minutes ago. Now it's one bevel, slightly curved in some spots, it's flatter in others. Uh, the other thing the new ones do, they have the back here so thin that it's confusing. People think it's another cutting edge, but it's just, it clears off the back so that uh, I guess when you're doing a cut like this, uh, the corner of the back doesn't hit so much. So I can already feel a, a strong burr on the inside. Uh, when, you, when you ground away that bevel, were you pretty much just touching the Dremel down right on the bevel or were you doing it in a couple of different lines to kind of trans? I, I was trying to leave the Sharpie marker uh, black right at the bevel to the very, very end. So I was trying to not actually touch the cutting edge. Gotcha, so you did sharpen everything. Edges. The cutting edge is, are, is already okay. It's everything immediately past the cutting edge that you need to deal with. Gotcha. All right, so I'm going to mute myself again, fulfilling the fantasies of my ex-wife. Mm. Wait, 
today's Foley artist is Andreas. Sorry? He said today's Foley artist, the people who do sound effects, is Andreas. <laughs> Only artists. They are the people who will go back and record much of the soundtrack that you actually hear in a movie, because usually mm -hmm. they're not actually capturing the actual sound on the, the soundstage when they're filming. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. They're, but the, then people have people... twisting, they're the people twisting celery whenever anyone breaks their arm. Right. <laughs> Or walking in stones when somebody's walking on stone, or or banging know. coconuts right together whenever there's a horse on screen. <laughs> exactly. I would love to see how actually that's done. A lot of times, the dialogue you hear, the actors have gone back and redone the dialogue to their acting while they're watching their performance and they'll redo the dialogue to get cleaner recordings of the dialogue. Yeah, I was thinking about that. How did the how did the um, the Muppets do that? Yeah, it's voice yeah. actors that are that are doing the vocal parts in sync, you know, <laughs> as they're watching the Yeah, but I, I saw this this movie about Fozzie that went into an existential crisis when he found out that he was a puppet. <laughs> like <laughs> he was out there, like like being Fozzie, and all of a sudden he looks down and he's like, "Kermit, Kermit, don't look down, don't look down." <laughs> There's a guy with his hand up my ass. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> Funny, in some movies, when you when you know that they do the voiceover thing afterwards, when you see somebody from behind and they're supposedly talking to somebody, you can see that their mouth moving is not matching what they're actually saying. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. So that was the uh, that was the full extent of the uh, Dremel part, and. Uh, that that got <clears throat> that was the heavy lifting, but now we have a uh, very rough surface. Mm -hmm. I can't. I don't know if you could tell that there's no longer a secondary bevel there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's very clear. It looks good. So, so now uh, we have to fix all the damage we just did. Basically, we have to go through the grits and sand that out. So I'll set this aside like a cook cooking show, and then I'll do that. Mike Stewart, not Martha Stewart. Don't be hitting the wine like Julia Child or Graham Kerr. So I recently did this for nine, nine knives. And after I did that, I said, okay, I'm, not, I'm no longer doing this for the class. Because <laughs> uh, I had remembered it taking like 20 minutes, but it took like an hour and 20 minutes. So, you know, considering how long we'll have the night, it's not that much time, but it is time. Yes. And time is money, and money is pleasure, and pleasure is... Uh... Carving spoons. Right. <laughs> so carving spoons. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the other part of this is uh, my very, very fancy, expensive uh, Ben Orford stick. Um, 
he didn't make it. I, he, he has a video that teaches you how to make a stick. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I have here is I put the finish on it is a CA glue mm -hmm. for no particular reason. So here we have 180 grit. Whoa. 180 grit dunked in the water. And so I'm going to mess up her handle a little bit, but there's the brakes. This is great. I'm so happy to watch you do this and get a little experience seeing it done. Yeah. I mean, basically, uh, if Mike could do it, by golly, I could do it. <laughs> Well, sometimes, a lot of times for me, the obstacle is just the unknown and seeing yeah. someone else do it gives me the confidence to try. So mm -hmm. basically, um, I hold it in this weird position so that I can go uh, a, this way out to the cutting edge, mm -hmm. right? So for a regular right-handed knife, this seems awkward, but this is, this is, I found the best way. So I'm just trying to do this until I get uh, all the scratches removed from the, from the Dremel. And sometimes I get bored and I'll go along this way. And that spot right down there is a real, real problem. It's very hard to get that spot. Mm -hmm. And this is the Yogi Sunquist trick is to just prop it up on something. So you can see the scratches from the Dremel melting away under the under the 180 grit. And then you go all the way up to 3000 or? No, no, I'm lazy. I only go up to 2500. Okay. And then I stop. Um, I don't, I also don't worry too much about the aesthetic look of the uh, bevel as long as it's overall the right shape and it's uh, looking good at the cutting edge. I don't worry about, about it because there will be some errant scratch, deep scratches left over from the first uh, Dremel sander thing. Mm -hmm. And then the, this part, this part's hard. I think I need a, like a dowel or something almost for that. I don't know if you can see that. And like with all sanding, the first one's going to be the hardest or take Please the longest. Clean up after yourself. Thank you. Got to do that. You got to clean up after yourself. This one. Mm -hmm. I used to love procrastinating. And recently I realized that because I procrastinate, my kitchen is full of dirty dishes and I don't know where to put anything down. And I just got fed up and I just decided that I will never leave the house with dishes in the sink and I'll never go to bed with dishes in the sink. And it's just been so nice. That's tough. That's tough because yeah. it that's tough because at bedtime I'm always too tired to do dishes. Yeah. I broke the rule this morning because I was running late. So I, I have a I have a coffee cup and a plate and a knife in the sink. Oh my God. Mike, come on, man. Jesus. But the next thing will be to not have to have a kitchen cabinet full of plates and cups and stuff. I can start downsizing. Hey, Mike, uh, question. You, you, you use these um, uh, Dremel things with uh, sanding paper on them right yeah i got a i got a whole set of those things with uh different stones like black and red and all you know all that kind of stuff yeah tiny stones is there is there any significant difference to those or well i tried using them and they weren't very aggressive uh, i think I, I was worried that they were just going to overheat it Ah, yeah. Good so point. after a while, after a while, I just say, I'm done with this 
because I am bored. But if you don't, if you don't do it right with this first one, you have to go back to it eventually anyway. Right. But I'm going to call that good enough for now. And then I'm going to do something wild and crazy. The back of this stick is rounded over. So I'm going to stick it on there. And at 180 grit, I'm going to do the back. And I'm trying to keep flat down to the back. I'm not trying to tip it up at all because that would be, well, I'm not an animal, let's just say. And this, this is where Yogi Sunquist's thing really comes into its own. Is, you know, it's very easy to, easy to do. So between Ben Orford and Willie Sun, I mean, Yogi Sunquist, there's a lot of good advice on how to do this. Yogi Orford or Ben, Ben Sunquist. Okay, so that's all scratched up and ready to go. That's 180 grit out of my life. Now what? I had these all organized at some point. There's 180. There's 220, by golly. There's 20. Can you dry out and reuse that sandpaper or is it a one shot deal? Um, I could, I have that. I, I reused that from the last time I sharpened these, one of these. Um, but you know, um, you're asking a lot of the sandpaper. And so it doesn't, it doesn't hold up for very long. Yeah. Gotcha. So I, I typically cut a sheet into a quarters or eighths and I'll use that and then throw it away or save it for maybe one more. But if you're doing this with dull paper, worn out paper, it just, uh, it takes even longer. So, you know, you have to be, you have to be pretty heartless about uh, throwing out the dull stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yogi, Yogi Sunquist has those tiny diamond stones that are the same shape as your stick. And I just don't want to buy yet another thing to sharpen stuff. Yeah, I mean, if you're only going to do this now and again, you don't need to have those diamond stones. This is a, you know, once in a blue moon. I mean, if you have to sharpen it, you don't have to go through all this. This is regrinding the freaking edge. You don't need to buy diamond stones to do this because, mm -hmm. you know, you're only going to do this once. And as Oren would point out, you know, you can just buy, there's a brand that you can buy that's basically did this already and it's 40 bucks instead of 20 bucks, but at least it's done already. I'm trying to remember the brand name. Pretty sure it's Matt White, Temple Mountain Woodcraft. No, no. <laughs> oh, Chuck's made a, Chuck made a funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little more than 40 bucks. I'd say there's a zero missing from that, maybe. <laughs> yeah, when I win the lottery, I'll buy some math. No, I'm play. sorry. I thought you said 240. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just yanking Matt's chain. I'm going to talk. Chuck, I'm going to talk George. I'm going to talk George into doing this same operation because I wonder how many crazy machines and tools George right. would use. For this. Well, I'm sure he'd get it done a lot faster than I'm doing. So there's I'm guessing that. he would be slower, but super crazy German precise. Right. He probably has specialized jigs to get the bevel angles just right. And... Well, the thing is that you're going to do it by hand and you're going to do it wrong. But when you when you strop it, you're also going to do it by hand and you're also going to do it wrong, but you'll do it wrong the same way. Yeah. So That's right. it's going to become your way of doing it. I think there's a um, I think there's a temptation when you're a beginner to overuse jigs and tools and that oh, yeah. learning how to do it freehand is the way to go. And then you reach a point 
like George, where you're deep into the engineering and precision of jewelry making, and then the jigs and tools make more sense again. <laughs> There's like a curve to it. Yeah, but makes buying all that stuff at the beginning right. slow you down to, your, your you to, building. You have to have it, and you have to know how to use it. All that stuff comes with a learning curve. And also. you have to have money. You have to have the money to do it. Right. and the will to spend the money, which is not going to be for everybody as they're like, well, I may not carve three spoons, let alone 30 or 300. So I don't want to buy something so expensive. So now I'm up to 320. And you just guys shout out if the camera angle gets bad or anything like that. No, I hey, think you're, you're doing great. Right, this is a great tutorial. I like seeing all the steps because this is what you miss when people skip steps and stuff for editing is you miss the way they hold it, the way they, you know what I mean? All the like little, the way they wrap, the size of the sandpaper, the way they wrap it, the way they, and even the fact that we fumble and, and change our minds and reposition and, you know, we have those awkward moments. And if you're watching a video tutorial and they look perfect, and then you try to do it and you're floundering around, you go like, well, they didn't flounder around. I must be doing something wrong, but they just edited all that stuff out. <laughs> well, I particularly appreciate getting you know, the full exposure to like all the grits moving up from cajoling to begging to cursing yeah. <laughs> to threatening. <laughs> <laughs> That's what used to drive me crazy about the New Yankee workshop with, with Norm yeah. Abram. He oh. would always go, and now we're going to check for square with our tape. Yep, it's square. And I was always right. going, what do you do if it's not? Like <laughs> That was always my pet peeve too. He never showed a mistake or how to readjust something. His show was meaningless basically to me. I would scream at the screen. What do you do if it's not square? Like at least once, just show me once what happens when it's not square. Yeah. Certainly at the beginning, he was just trying to, to survive because the, all the furniture people were screaming at him for the terrible way he built stuff on that show, you know, because he was a he was he was a carpenter, and he was making furniture in these bizarre ways that a furniture maker would never do. And it's like, you know, yeah, I watched the uh, learn how to build, dude. I I started watching him on like season twenty eight, and then I went back and watched some of the early seasons, and the methods he used in the early seasons were completely the same method, methods he was criticizing in later seasons. Well, he grew as a person. Yeah. I watched him uh, break out a handsaw once in one of the early ones, and I had to just avert my eyes <laughs> when he was using the saw. If he was in my classroom, I'd be coaching the hell out of him right now. I was thinking to myself. <laughs> There was another episode where he was interviewing he was interviewing someone who had a dedicated paint shop. And he said, I've always wanted to have a dedicated paint shop on my show, but it's just not practical for the home woodworker. And I was like, what? All that other stuff was meant to be practical? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he not a home worker. $40,000 worth of equipment sitting in your shop is at the practical level. Yeah. I had no idea that I was watching a show meant to be practical up to this point where having your own dedicated paint studio is where the line is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the floor here is starting to look like a, a sandpaper abattoir. It's just paint store look like. Okay, 600. After 600, we do 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. So we, we have maybe 10 more minutes of this if we go the whole way. This is where you start saying like, so I have one already made from yesterday. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've done that. I've done that cooking show thing a lot. Um, you know, um, but I'm not actually trying to do a demo. I'm just trying to do this for somebody, and we're doing it online as a as a as an extra. But yeah, if I if I if I had to do this for an audience where I had to worry about their attention span, I would do it differently. Like I do a bunch of stuff for the Facebook people and like, I cannot linger too much on something. Cause they, they have the, well, I've been told they have a short attention span, but the ones I know, uh, that's not really true, but we're under orders to be quicker than this. <laughs> So I'll have I'll have like four four different versions of something, and I'll get set up. Said okay, now it goes in the clamps for gluing, and then I say here's one that's been in the clamps since yesterday, and we continue on with the story. But that's that's less about their attention span, and that's more how to how to edit out the waiting for the glue to dry. But the, uh, the, the chess set that Ron did recently, uh, I did the original chess set uh, for them and the chessboard too. So I was allowed to take months to do that. All right, so that's 600. Yep, I almost cut myself, so we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about an abattoir. Okay, here's a thousand grit. Not only is it a thousand, it's P1000. We all know what that means, right? No. I, I, thought, I thought maybe not. So uh, a thousand grit means it's, for the most part, the grits are uh, such that it takes 1000 of them to span an inch. So that's when they, Talk about grits in sandpaper, that's what they mean. 80 grit means 80 pieces, 80 granules will stretch across one inch. Oh, so it's like pixels. Yeah, like pixels, but with grit, with little tiny rocks. Roxels. <laughs> what else floats? So um, anyway, so, um, but what happens is that uh, most of the grit would be a thousand, but every now and again, there would be like a big, big one that's maybe 600 grit. So you're sanding and all of a sudden in the middle of your beautiful sanded surface, there's a big scratch. So having that errant 600 grit particle in there is a real pain. So P signifies that they did a better job of uh, screening it so that it's more likely that you won't get one that's the wrong grit. So if you really need something to be <coughs> polished, you want to use the P grits. That's awesome, you know. Thanks. The Benford, Not to be confused with instant grits. The Benford 6000 of sandpaper. Yeah. No self-respecting. Ben, ben Orford of sandpapers. No self-respecting Southerner would use instant grits. Thank you. Just watched that with my kids the other night. It was so good. Such a good movie. Instant Grit is the name of a movie? No, My Cousin, my cousin Vinny. Vinny. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I also caught your really small rocks. What yes, else floats? Thank you. What else floats? Churches. It's like the second or third uh, Monty Python joke of the day. Churches, churches float. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fifteen hundred grits. So I'm making a mess. This is another. This is another thing that's helpful to me. Is at least when I was new to sharpening, but it still remains helpful. Is when I'm on one grit for like an hour. I remind myself, no one who knows what they're doing spends an hour on this grid. Like I'm, do I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, if you're spending an hour on that grid, you should have spent five minutes on 
with a rougher grit first. Right. You're, soft, you're softening that back bevel also? No. No. Oh, by back bevel, oh, I'm back bevel on closer to the spine. I hear you several times. I hear me several times. Echo. Yeah. Ugh, okay. So that's now we're looking for two thousand grits. I was the uh, cause of the echo. Y'all were hooked up to my surround sound. You Is that Mozzie? Yep. Hey, Mozzie. Good afternoon. Thanks for uh, thanks for fixing it. Now I have this sudden urge to listen to Rush test for echo. So now the problem is it's so damn shiny, I can't actually tell it, whether I'm doing new stuff or not. So now is when I would probably want to break out the, the Sharpie again. But I'm just going for it. Okay, that was 2000, so 2500. And then we'll be done with the sandpaper. <sighs> so doing it for one knife is not too bad, but doing it for nine is an incredible misery. Yeah, I can see where that would get old quick. Yeah. My hands just got like dark, like black and chapped and and my shoulder started to hurt. After doing nine, were you attempt were you uh, tempted to make some sort of jig or anything to make it easier, or do you think it's well to get it done? I think the thing to do is to learn how to do it on the Tormek. If you're going to do a lot of it, apparently you can do the, do this on the Tormek. I don't know if that's true or not, but. Um, I was tempted to never offer to do. Do we lose him? And we'll never know. We'll never know what he was tempted to do. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, come back. I must have been about to give away a trade secret there. Right. The sensor stepped in and cut him off. Yeah. I'll bet Google just ended the demo because they heard him talking about the chess set that he made for them earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Oi. I think he's still talking about it himself. Yeah, you see. <laughs> Probably. He'll catch himself five minutes from now and realize he's not been online. <laughs> Too funny. Aww. Maybe his son died. That's what I'm thinking. So I found out there's this really amazing wood carver. Katya Boyko, who's from, I think it was, was it Belarus or somewhere, who lives like right down the road from me. You wanna, do you wanna stop recording if we're just gonna go to basic channel chit chat?
Yeah, I guess. He was pretty much through with what he was, I guess, doing anyway, right? Oh, I guess, yeah. Then you could, I don't know. If he comes back, then it would be a separate recording. That's true. I can slice it together if you want. Oh, really? Yeah. We do audio and video editing. Oh, cool. Well, that's good to know. So you can... <laughs> You've just voted yourself a new job. Can, can, you, can you retouch this video and make me look like Brad Pitt? <laughs> Hell. <laughs> Can you add in some I mean, Nobody can eclipse how handsome Kevin is. Whoa! God, Whoa. that video. Hey, oh! That, that escalated quickly. I was Damn. just about to ask. I He's was just, just about trying to... to win the green challenge. Come on, that's all this is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can see through your ploy. I'm just the spokesman. I have no, I have no control over the judges. <laughs> I was going to ask her if she could add in some twisted celery sound effects while I dislocate my shoulder here. <laughs> Will be amazing. Some subtitles in all the different languages. Right? <laughs> right. That would be yes. What we need great. we need like we need Google Instant Translator. Yeah, that would be. Did, did we do anything with the language channels kevin or no that... not yet no it's an idea i haven't worked it out yet i haven't even told chuck about it yet what's oh. this i was thinking about hosting a day once a month or something rise up international day where we could create separate breakout rooms for different languages so carvers that might be insecure about joining because they don't speak english well they, we could have a German room and a Russian room. He's back. Four, he finally realized he was talking to nobody. Well, when I realized I wasn't being given any guff or crap by anybody, I realized something was wrong. <laughs> um, uh, my, my computer just uh, ran out of juice. I, I hadn't plugged it in fast enough. No you, were just saying, you were just saying one thing I am, one thing I don't like to do, but I was tempted to do was, and then you died right at that moment. You're like, We've all been trying to guess what that is. Oh, I. Wow. I had just we asked. We were talking you. about don't getting tell a Mike. Back. Don't tell Mike. It's your I, secret. Don't tell. I had, just, I had asked you if you were tempted to create jigs when you had nine to do, if that helps. Wow. So I lost you guys quite a while ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. okay. I made lunch and I, I, I made lunch and car carved a spoon since yeah. then. <laughs> Did you start doing the, the 240 grit? <laughs> what, so what, was I finished with the sandpaper? No. You were, oh, you you're were... just pulling our leg. Did you mean to say that? <laughs> they're, they're, they're very mean to me, Andrea. So I have no idea whether they're pulling my leg or not. No, you you cut off right after you would when Kevin. I only said want he to hear was... from Andrea. I only trust Andrea. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> so, no, just kidding. What? Where did where did we leave it? Right there, where Kevin said. You had pretty telling. much finished your sandpaper, and Kevin was asking you if you were ever tempted to make jigs to speed it up, given oh, yeah. how many you've been doing, and you were talking about. You know, some people doing it on a Tormac. You then you were your last sentence that we heard was, "I have been tempted to," and, and then, then it cut off. I have been tempted to go to Cuba to get real Cuban cigars, but it's illegal. <laughs> um, I I I was just gonna say I was I've been tempted to use the Tormac myself, but it would be like. Uh, Supposedly it can be done, but it, it, I just think I would probably ruin a knife or two. Yeah. Um, That's it? That's all you've been tempted to no, do? No, I have no idea what I was saying. I, I don't listen to myself when I talk. <laughs> How tedious would that be? So what I was going to say, though, was I wished I had tried to cut a piece of paper with the knife before I fixed it. Because mm. uh, oh, yeah. then yeah. if I could shave uh, a piece of paper with this in a few minutes, it would make more, it would be a meaningful thing. Anyway, so I'm down here at this, I'm back to the stropping stage. 
I would have been mean and I was just about to say that it would have made for a much interesting bit, much more interesting video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm I, I yeah. I strive to be interesting. Someday I'll someday I'll get there. <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay, it's a tough room. It's just generally a tough room. <clears throat> By the way. <coughs> No. Belly button guy. <laughs> okay, so mm -hmm. the stropping sadly is just the same as stropping all the time. <laughs> but if you do it right, you can actually get almost all the way in, <coughs> in one go. <coughs> So someday, Chuck, one of our recorded things will go on, go along without any snafus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not as long as I'm at the helm. <laughs> no, I, I, I apologize. I, I knew getting here that my computer was low on juice and I just, in the rush to get ready, I forgot I should have plugged. Eh, no worries. It's all good. Okay, so that's the... Uh, the outside part, and here's the inside part. Oh, I forgot to spotlight you again. Okay, so what was that, uh, roughly half an hour, 45 minutes? So what we have here is a nice polished single bevel. Nice. And it, it, I don't know if it'll cut paper or not. Let's take a, see, take a look. Uh, it cuts paper not that well, so I, I probably have to go back and do something else. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's snagging a little bit. So I'll have to go back to stropping a little. So a lot of people are, get anxiety over having to strop it because they're afraid they won't be consistent. Mm. And they won't be, you know, but you end up, it's still better than not stropping. And you'll probably, because of muscle memory, end up doing something consistently, at least. Let's see if that helped at all. Oh, 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 yeah. So that's good enough. And then the acid test. Will it spoon? Oh, yeah. All right, so anyway, that's uh, that's how you do it. Nice. Thank you. Very welcome. Awesome. Thanks much, Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks, um, Mike. Hit stop on the recording at this point. Yeah, stop recording so then I could say... <laughs>